How's it going today? Hey, good. How are you? Good. Computer problems. So I'm using Matt's computer oh, okay. this morning. <laughs> All right. So it'll be a minute. No, we're good to go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can you see our screen? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, we see it. Perfect. All right. Good morning, and welcome to another Friday morning safety meeting. We're already almost halfway through August, which is just mm -hmm. crazy. Uh, today's code item of the week is maintain cleanliness and connection of vehicles and equipment. Ben Dow, do you have anything to add on that? Take care of our tools and equipment as if it were your own. <laughs> All right, so we're five days from our last recordable injury. Five days from our last first aid injury and four days from our last vehicle incident. Um, that vehicle incident was not our fault, which is good. And uh, safety shout out to Tanner and crew. They had a uh, signal up in the air uh, using a telehandler. A box truck hit their telehandler. They kept their composure, kept everything safe, and uh, looked around, saw that we had a camera up on one of the trucks, and told us how to get the footage and everything or when to get the footage from and we were able to get everything figured out after that uh box truck person denied 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 so shout out to them for uh, keeping their composure looking into the investigation side of things and getting everything taken care of so today we're going to talk about protecting against impalement hazards So what is impalement? Impalement is the introduction of a foreign body through the skin. So think of a piece of rebar, a curb pin, something like that going through you. You really don't want that. So all protruding, according to 1926.701B, all protruding reinforcing steel onto in, into which employees could fall shall be guarded to eliminate the hazard of impalement. So that's any that falls below where, or where anybody's work, any part of anybody's body while they're working needs to have a rebar cap on them. Uh, during the course of construction, alteration or repairs, forms and scrap lumber with protruding nails and other debris shall be kept cleared from work areas, passageways and stairs in and around buildings or other structures. So actually going back to the rebar caps, just one thing with them is I've been doing a little bit of research on finding better ones. But as of right now, we're still there's really just one with the industry standard. And every time you do anything, they always pop off, pop off, pop off. So just make sure that you have somebody that's you know, every couple hours going around and just replacing them, or if you knock one off, not put it right back on, so that way we're not creating a hazard there. Uh, so just make sure that any nails or anything that could be protruding uh, is taken care of, either knock it down or take it out is even better, especially like plywood and stuff like that. If it's face down, somebody might not see the nail head, they might go to pick it up and stick a nail right through their hand. So you want to pay special attention when you're working at any height over protruding hazards, especially like if you're doing form work or something like that. And even if you're a couple feet up on a scaffold and you fall, well, it's a couple feet further that you're falling down onto that impalement hazard, that piece of rebar. So if you're working up on forms, make sure that everything's capped below you. It's still going to hurt if you fall, but at least you're not going to get stabbed with a piece of rebar. If you're working at night or if there's limited visibility, be extra careful. And if you're working in the snow, you might not be able to see the impalement hazard, but it's still very much there. Um, if somebody is impaled, you want to call 911. You don't want to remove the object. If it's in there, just leave it, have them stay where they are, coach them through it, just talk to them, talk to them about anything except for what's going on. And you want to utilize any first aid practices that you're trained in. We're coming into the winter season, as crazy as that sounds pretty soon. So if you're interested in doing a CPR first aid class with us, uh, just reach out and we will get that facilitated for you. All right, I'm going to kick that back over. Okay. So a couple of things, Tom. We don't use them as much anymore, but grade stakes. If you park a piece of equipment next to a grade stake, we had a guy from Griswold one time hopping out of his truck 
got a great steak right through the thigh, um, landed on it. Um, the other thing that one of my guys on my crew had happened one time was a fence post for snow fence. Um, he was climbing down off the loader. He parked a little close to the fence and it, that was a nasty one, right? In, it, it hit him right in the side. Mm -hmm. Um, so there are things that besides rebar. <laughs> out yeah. There, curb pins can, is another one too that oh, uh, yeah. you, you could easily do it with and try to cap those when I see them out and about, especially if they're sticking up past their uh, yep. curb form. So. Yeah, curb pins are a good one. Yeah. So, but I think it was important what you said about when it when you're in danger of getting impaled on something to, to make sure to use them. We did a job for Pizza Galley one time and they had us put them eight feet up in the air where no one was, but they wanted to make sure we had them on in case, um, so we would be covered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and sometimes if it's going to be up there long term, it's better to take like a two by four and kind of cap a row yeah. of them with a two by four, and then it's going to actually stay where it is rather than the caps constantly falling off. Stuff. So you, use common sense. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, we all set. Can we? Can you see my screen? And see it. All right. Okay, impalement hazards. And for announcements this week, uh, congratulations to Chandler Lesperance. He's our newest ECI operating foreman. Very exciting news. Make sure you congratulate Chandler. And we have a couple links here, to one to the Facebook, ECI Facebook, and the other to the ECI Instagram. I'm looking forward to the next uh, photo contest. We'll have to be looking for that. We have several new employees. We have Jason Peets, a CDL driver. We have Jess Fitzgerald with the Civil Group. And Danny Howder, Howder, Howder. Howder with the Heavy Civil Group. Good. Well, welcome all you new guys, and I hope to see you around. I have a link here that I kind of eliminated for some reason deleted accidentally for the last few emails that was the uh, the link to the ECI healthcare and hmm, I didn't mean to do a health insurance summary <laughs> the health <laughs> uh, the wellness program <laughs> I think sometimes it's hard to get all these straight but that was the intent and we'll talk again about the wellness program we haven't been through it recently I know that I have to make my appointment to get uh, get updated on it and for this week we're talking about the uh the airport uh taxiway g extension and the new general aviation south apron and eric are you out there i am here all right you want to take over the screen it might move things along faster uh let me see choice is yours Let me stop sharing, or is that? No, hold on. I just got to get it set up here. Okay. Sorry about that. I should have warned you. <laughs> That's all right. Um, hey, let me, through this uh, email I got last night, too, we have some guests we put on here besides the UCI employees. And one of them is uh, David Wheel. He was uh, a guy that we dealt with at the National Guard. He's been on my email list, and he says, after responding to the email, Hi, Ken. Always enjoy to see your project photos. Every so often, I can relate to these to some of the work that I remember the 31st engineers doing in the area. Now that now know, or sorry, yeah, know that when I see your work crews as I travel the site, uh, the state, I mean, I have a sense of great pride knowing how much you are all total professionals. Wishing you all the best, Dave says. Cool. Still got a fan in Dave. Oh, yeah. He is. Stu King the other day, too. So. Like being are, you take, are you able to take over, Eric? Yeah. Uh, can you see my screen? Um, yes, I do. Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, BTV, Extend Taxiway G, and Construct New General Aviation South Apron Part 2. 
ECI has been contracted by the city of Burlington to construct an extension of taxiway G and a new general aviation south apron at the Patrick Leahy Burlington International Airport. The project is being built to service the new 140,000 square foot beta manufacturing facility, which is where beta will be producing their electric airplanes. Beta plans to construct another 140,000 square foot building, which will be attached to the existing building within the next three years. The apron is being built to accommodate both buildings and is 192,000 square feet or 4.4 acres in size. So kind of a recap to where we left off with the last project of the week. This is um, what the site looked like. <clears throat> nice aerial view. Um, and, you know, we're just basically had excavated everything off the site that needed to be removed. So and that was uh, October 2023. All blasting had been completed. 68,000 cubic yards of material has been removed from the site. The site has been rough graded. A temporary road has been installed for beta for access to the adjacent apron and temporary side offense is up along the limits of our site along the active report. And just as a recap, the side of fence is the airport fence, security fence, which um, goes all the way around the outside of the airport. Um, the rest of last year, uh, we subgraded the apron for gravel and 15,000 cubic yards of gravel was placed. FAA requires 100% modified compaction. This is very hard to achieve and requires the perfect amount of water combined with proper compaction technique. Uh, we used a 10 and 18 ton roller continuously to achieve this compaction. So it takes a lot of effort to get a 100% modified compaction. So as you see here is water. That water truck was used daily, all mm -hmm. day, every day. And those are the two rollers that we used. And <clears throat> um, lots of times we would think we had the compaction. And, get the compaction tester in, and we were just shy, 98, 99. Um, so it was very hard to do. Um, and and uh, a lot of times we found out that if you just static rolled it after you thought you had it a few times, that, that actually helped achieve the 100%. <clears throat> and here's a picture uh, up by <clears throat> the taxiway of the tester uh, taking some compaction tests. Um, there are two trench drains in the apron and also a concrete apron at the beta building. The easternmost trench drain building apron and a portion of the western trench drain were poured while the gravel was being installed late last year. This trench drain is an eco drain system. Each drain is 300 feet long. The concrete grew to crew did a great job with it, working in some pretty cool conditions just before the winter shutdown. And let's have some pictures here. Uh, this is uh, one of the, this is one piece of the ACO drain, if you're not familiar with it. Um, I think these are 22 inches long. So um, over 300 feet, that's a lot of individual pieces of drain. The drains, in order to mount them, uh, a mud slab was poured. And here's a picture of, uh, you know, just the form for the mud slab. Also, uh, in each run of trench drain, there were catch basins that emptied into the actual storm drain system. And you can see the drain manhole there and uh, just excavated out here uh, for the actual catch basin in the trench drain system. Um, and here's a picture of the pipe. The, the trench, the catch basin was a just a PVC uh, structure uh, within the echo drain system. Uh, and you can see it a little bit in the background. There's a better picture coming up uh, of the black plastic uh, catch basin and then the eight inch ductile iron uh, outlet pipe into the uh, storm drain system. 
and here's a good picture you can see also all the you know the apron and the gravel being installed while all this is happening and here's a picture of uh forming up catch basin it's basically a big block of concrete poured around it <clears throat> And here's a picture of the boys forming up around um, the echo drain system. So basically, the an echo drain system, you know, these drains are each individual piece. Here's a better picture. Um, you drill in rods into the mud slab, and the the echo drains are hung on these rods. Um, and then you can see there's U-bolts that go down underneath. And then there's lateral rebar that go, runs the length. A um, lot, of, lot of time um, and a lot of uh, work to get those perfectly level. And they came out really well. And here's a picture uh, of one of the pours as they were pouring it. You can see they have the top sealed off. And there's a picture later on of the finished product. And again, while all this is happening, we're putting gravel in um, and getting our compaction. The, we shut the project down in late December because compaction could not be achieved with the cold temperatures, frost. At that point, the majority of the gravel had been placed and we had done most of the work we could outside of the CIDA fence. The major piece left was extending taxiway G to the new General Aviation South apron. In order to do this work, the new permanent side of fence would have to be installed and all workers on the project would have to be would have to have a badge or be escorted by a badge person. Also, a major portion of the rest of the project was going to be performed by subcontractors. We started the job back up on April 30th this year. The reason we started so late was because of the remaining contract time. Our fencing contractor could not get to the site until the beginning of May, and we needed the fence to be up in order to complete the project. In order to not waste calendar days, we held off until April 30th, and at that point, the crew began topsoiling, hydro seeding, and installing the remaining gravel while the fence was being installed. The remaining trench drain was also poured during this time. Perimeter Solutions, which was our fence subcontractor, installed 1,600 feet of fence, and the site went live on the okay. airport on May 30th, after the new fence was inspected by BTV Ops and TSA. So I had a pretty cool picture here of uh, the crew. I can't really probably see it. Let me see if I can. The crew working uh, topsoiling with a F-35 flying over, which was a daily occurrence. Yeah. Um, not very high over them either. <laughs> no, they, they were right off the edge of the runway there. So um, right. I was lucky to take that quick pick. So um, mm -hmm. there's uh, Randy Piper and his crew. Um, they're the ones that uh, started the project backed up this year. And that's a picture of them doing the topsoiling, which there was a lot of. And here's kind of a picture of... Uh, finished product of the topsoil. Uh, at this point, it was time to shut down Taxiway G so that we could make the connection to the new apron. Because of our contract completion date, we brought another crew to the site to do this work. And this allowed Randy uh, Piper and his crew to finish graveling on the apron and while this connection was being made. The work remaining to tie the new apron into taxiway G was full depth reconstruction of roughly 100 feet of existing taxiway, a short extension to meet the new apron and taxiway lighting and signage. <clears throat> so uh, Charlie Bechtel came from Highgate uh, to, to do this portion of the project. And um, this is a picture of uh, Derek. He's pulling the pavement up in the taxiway and um, to go back to the, the badge part of this project, you'll notice on the right in the back is Jackson Ruitt, and he was the escort. So 
Charlie and his crew weren't bad, so we needed to provide an escort for them the entire time they were uh, working inside the airport. And that went for Pike and, um, you know, any subcontractor that we had in there that wasn't badged. Um, this is a picture, uh, the edge of the pavement that's cut there, that's the end of the full depth reconstruction in the taxiway. Um, and then we actually, we did some milling uh, from that point down the taxiway 100 feet for the tie in with the pavement. And again, there's Jackson Ruitt, our escort, uh, to make sure that nobody was doing anything they weren't supposed to be out there. Uh, here uh, we have a picture of our subcontractor, Molson Electric, who was installing all the electrical conduit lines and pull boxes, signs, and taxiway lights for the extension. They were badged, um, so they were able to do their work without having anything involvement from us. Oh, uh, here's a picture of uh, the light taxiway lights installed. The bases for the lights, I should say. And you can see there's uh, nine inches of pavement there on the taxiway, the existing taxiway. Uh, just another quick shot of the uh, concrete cased conduit. Uh, for the taxiway lights with a pull box and tracer wire. And uh, so we had Eric Rossier badged, and here's a, a picture of the uh, convoy that Eric would have behind him uh, going in and out of the airport since he was able to escort these hired trucks. He obviously didn't have badges. <clears throat> so it was it was a uh, at times slowed us down, but really the only way that we could do it. And you can see a picture here also of that finished trench drain. And uh, Pike did the paving for us. They also fine graded the site. Here's a picture of uh, Dennis in the grader. And he's working up at uh, the taxiway connection. And uh, we performed the milling ourselves. So there's a picture of our milling crew. It was uh, half a day's worth of milling, not, not too much. But uh, base coat went up to uh, where we started milling and then they pulled the top coat over the milled area to make a nice clean transition. And here's a picture of, it's hard to get a whole picture of this site, but this is most of the apron. You can see from the building um, on the left out to the second trench drain has, that's all been fine graded and they're working their way out um, to the edge where the ditch is. And then straight down, you can, is the taxiway G. <clears throat> um, this airport requires FAA, requires a test strip uh, be done and tested before any main or before any paving can be done. Uh, just to make sure that the mix is uh, proper and compaction is good. So uh, there's Pike doing the test strip, which they did up by the beta building. And uh, they did that on June 10th and everything passed. So they were able to continue with the paving. And here's a picture of them the paving base coat. And they did this paving in that first heat wave where we got up to 96 degrees. Um, they actually had a few workers pass out um, and have to take a break one of those days. But they continued to pave right through it and they 
Got it done. Pavers are tough, aren't they? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, here's a picture of, um, so the, the base coat is in, and we're looking straight down the taxiway here, and you can see the top coat um, here on the right-hand side. Uh, base coat is kind of look is all wet. Grass is coming in nicely. And here's a finished product, um, almost. I got this picture from Beta. They took it. Um, so 10 feet around the, the pavement was uh, is sawed. And uh, this, actually, the sod was being installed on this day. You can see the tractor trailer on the pavement. But that is full of sod. So, mm -hmm. um, And you can also see the striping has been done mm -hmm. in this picture. All those T's are tie downs uh, where you can tie planes down. Uh, and the sod needed to be watered twice a day for two weeks. And then once a day for a week after that. So uh, Bruce Putnam did that for us, uh, which was pretty big commitment because that was a weekend work too. Uh, but yeah, he did a really good job with it. And here I just took this picture yesterday, and this is the finished product. Everything's green, and you know it's open and being used, and Thanks. all done. All right. Nice job. Very nice. Cool job. <laughs> big job. Yeah. It was a big job. Lots, lots, of to it. lots of pavement, lots of everything. Why don't you scroll on down, Eric, to the archive photo. There's Alan that's at the airport, and he's along the fence there, the side, I guess you'd call it, right? Yeah. And he is looking right towards Beta. That was back in 2004. And Beta is really right in that area where that where the quarry was there for Ireland. You can see the uh, the hangar on the right there above the shed roof. Yeah. So the beta, that building, Beta building, is right next to that hangar. Yep, right there. So it's kind of cool. I found that picture. I'm like, hey, <laughs> that's like the site we're looking at here. That's 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 awesome. Great Twenty picture. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> all right well good job on that uh project for sure thank you everybody uh on that and thanks eric for presenting and uh pretty cool stuff i'll pass it back to the safety department yeah if you're watching a group setting please send over your attendance this morning uh have a good day have a safe day okay have a good thanks, one Tom. thanks everybody